Alrighty, y'all. So today we are going to talk about predicting volume. Now, what are the only things that really can up your win percentage in trading? So today we are going to focus on how to read volume because I have a ton of videos on number one. I use a level two more than I use my charts, and so should you. So how do I use uh, volume and predicted volume to increase my win percentage? Okay. Um, now, the thing about predicting volume is I find it's best uh, when it comes to shorting or continued momentum plays. That's really where, you know, it, predicting volume works now i'm going to show you guys some scenarios and then i'm going to go in real time and show you i literally crushed a trade this week it was my biggest short trade ever and i used uh i used this strategy uh myself so this is kind of an intro into the short trader boot camp now <clears throat> there's two ways to predict volume it is a stock will gap up okay off of extremely high volume we saw this on cdio we saw this on am am um, just completely rock it with 30 to 100 million shares of volume, uh, and then kind of consolidate after hours. Now it holds that momentum, uh, but how can we accurately predict using volume if this is going to continue higher, if this is more likely to consolidate, or this is more likely to dump? Three scenarios, okay? Scenario number one. Do, uh, let's it. There we go. So scenario one is the best scenario for longing penny stocks. Okay, so there's two clear ways on how to predict volume. There's one, you times the pre-market volume by 10x to get the daily volume, or you times the first hour of open from 9.30 to 10.30 by 4. You can find out which one is more accurate for you and your strategy. Uh, for me, I don't. I'm usually trading by 10:30, so knowing this number doesn't really help me much. Uh, what helps me is is predicting the pre-market volume by 10x. Okay, that's what helps me. Now, <clears throat> say um, the stock gaps up off of 100 million shares of volume. Okay, a stupid amount of volume. I mean, 100 million is a lot. CDIO, I think, had 85, 87 million shares uh, the other day. Now, if you want to see what number three is going to be or what market open is going to do, uh, I want to look at the pre-market volume. For example, okay, if this trades pre-market 20 million shares, so times, or yeah, then times that by 10, so it's expected to have 200 million shares of volume, which is, again, a lot. That's like a DWAC move. Um, you can expect this to continue much higher the next day. Why? Because the predicted volume outweighs the relative volume. Okay, so there's two, two types of volume. There's the predicted, and then there's the, re the relative, the, the volume that was the day previous. Okay, so now I'm going to go over... Um, scenario two, where you really should be looking to short. Uh, it's ideal for short traders. And I did this literally last week. Okay, stock gaps up. We'll do the exact scenario that happened to me yesterday. I'll show it to you actually in the charts. Okay, stock gaps up. Okay, 36 million shares of volume. Pretty good day. Okay. Now the next morning, I sit at my desk. I'm watching it pre-market, and I'll tell you actually almost exactly. Actually, I can't tell you how much I had pre-market, but yeah, I can actually. And um, it has you know kind of trade sideways, does a little bit of this, a little bit of that, down, up, all around. Uh, a lot of Doji candles, and I look at the pre-market volume, and it's 500k. 500,000 shares of volume, okay? So what can I expect market opens volume to be? What can I expect in this day's volume to be? Someone tell me. If 
the pre-market volume is 500,000. Perfect, there you guys go, he's got it. So remember, pre-market is times 10, and then first hour of market opens times four. So you 10X the volume, and this actually ended up being, uh, on the day, 5.7 million shares. So, 5.7. What do you think happened when the predicted volume was much less than the relative volume? Okay, this is exactly what happened. <gasps> Let's say it's just down a little bit, so let's gap it up. You have to understand that's a lot of volume in this area, a lot of traders holding averages in this area, a lot of traders bought it this day or looking to get out of it. Okay, what happens is that stock comes up and retests that volume level with that predicted volume of only 500,000 and bounces straight down. This happened. Why does this happen? Well, it's because traders were holding averages in this area, looking to take profits, 36 million shares of volume. I think the float on this was like a five, a 5 million share float, so almost a eight times float rotation. Pretty good, okay? Here this day, it only had a one times float rotation. Now, what does that mean? It means that shares are not trading hands nearly as quick or nearly as much as this day. It's not, it's not liquid. Okay, not many, you know, it's not a ton of liquidity around the market because shares aren't really trading hands. Now, what ha ends up happening is these traders who buy it this day want to lock in profits in this next day. So what they do, they sell it when it starts to gap up. It generally won't break the pre or the, the previous day's high and bounces. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, the third scenario is that it is relatively the same volume, and in that case, it is a risky trade. You, It's up to you to decide if you want to take that trade or not based off of what the level two is saying. But hypothetically, if this had three to four million shares of volume, like three to four mil pre-market, I probably wouldn't take this trade or I'd take it off of light share size because it's just going to more likely consolidate, and the odds of it going up or down are the same. So 50-50 chance, you don't want to take that as a trader. Might as well go play for that. I'm predicting volume. Again, you could do you could use the first hour of open, or you could use pre-market um, in case maybe the catalyst doesn't come out till till right at open or something like that. But personally speaking, I like using pre-market. It's just for the stocks I'm trading, they should have a decent amount of pre-market volume. Okay, yep, that's why. Make sure you look at the float size. You know, what I would do and what this trader recommended for me to do is, is split it into three different types of float. The nano float, you know, sub a million. Uh, micro float, you know, one to 10 million. And then, you know, a uh, little bit bigger float anywhere from 20 to 50 million. Uh, because you have to understand these stocks react a little bit differently. Uh, so find your win percentage between those three and then go after it. For me, it's one to 10 million. Now, now that I'm at that range, I'm trying to even narrow it down even more so to, to see, okay, of the 10 million, is it one to five, is it five to 10? And I keep trying to narrow it down to, you know, inc increase my win rate. Now, this is AM AM. I crushed a short trade on it, not today. Um, I, had to cut, I had to cut that for a loss, um, but I crushed a trade on it. It was my best short I've ever had not too long ago. It was uh, just a few days ago. Um, and I could show you exactly how I traded it. So stock gapped up off of insane volume, right? Um, news came out. I mean, it was a multi-day runner, uh, for, for example, uh, and, it, and it gapped up 36 million shares of volume this day, right here. This was, the, this was the day right here. You can see in the top left-hand corner, it says volume 36.94 million, so 37 million shares. Now, the next morning, I sit at my desk, um, and I see this. I see... Um, Where'd the volume go? Pre-market, I know there's not much volume, but, um, dude, there's there's no volume here. Uh, where did it, where did it go, all go? Now, uh, let me go to the, here. I'll tell you exactly how much it had. Intraday, 363,000 shares of volume. Okay, so one-tenth of what it should have to even match it. Now, if this wants to continue higher, it has to at least match it, if not more, closer to double. Now, I look down, or I look at my desk, I'm like 363 million shares of volume, I'm doing the math. I'm thinking, times that by 10. Yesterday I have 30, 37 million. Maximum, if I times it by 10, it'll, I'll be at 
3.7 million. That's almost 90% less volume than it needs to have. Okay, now what's going to happen? Because this less volume, because this decrease in liquidity, look what happened to the stock. Went from six dollars th that morning all the way down to four seventy-five. Next morning, hitting my price target of four fifty. Then I pull out my newsletter. That's how I was able to accurately predict if this was a good short opportunity. Okay, that's it. Um, now there was more strategy to it based off of my four-hour setup, uh, but this confirmed my entry and exit this day because of the pre-market volume, okay? Um, obviously, I don't just solely trade because the stock moves up and then it has a little bit of volume pre-market. Um, this should just confirm your trade plan based off of other technical setups, if that makes sense. So to recap, there's three types of things that can happen. One, it can have a lot less volume pre-market um, and it'll more than likely dump if it doesn't have at least matching it. If it matches it, uh, it's a risky trade, you know, watch the level two. It It's kind of a 50-50 chance if it's going to break out, uh, depending on if there's new news in the day. Uh, if volume does pick up the first hour a lot, um, like out of the gates like it did on CMMB or something like that a, a few days ago, uh, that's a different story. Then you kind of want to have to negate pre-market volume um, if it just completely just goes berserk and squeezes into a halt. Um, but that's an anomaly. Now, if it has an overwhelming amount of pre-market volume, say I sat down this morning and it had like five to 10 million shares of pre-market volume. Okay, that's a different story. This is more than likely going to continue much higher. Hold on a second. If, um, if it simply just has the volume it's predicted to have. Why? Because the predicted volume should outweigh the relative volume of the day prior and it should continue much higher. Now, the science behind it, like I said, is simply because a lot of traders were trading it this day, exchanging hands, providing liquidity. If the volume dies out here, no liquidity is provided, not many traders are exchanging hands, they're not trading it, more than likely going to lock in profits from the day prior. 40 million shares of volume, that's a lot of traders trading that, um, a lot of them. You know, um, So those traders are looking to dump their shares at some point. They're, they're traders, they're not... I, none of these buyers were, were long-term holders. I'm sorry, they weren't, unless they're, they're idiots. Um, so that's exactly how I like to use predicted volume when it comes to trading. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and then the last thing I would encourage you guys is split up into three type of, of float sizes or market caps uh, and figure out what you're best at. So nano, micro, um, and more larger cap. Uh, if you guys are trading alongside me and have decent win percentage, generally um, it's going to be the, the micro, the in-between nano and, and larger cap, I find is my sweet spot. Um, like MOB, I, I refuse to trade. It just was a complete a nano float stock. And it squeezed up here this one day. Um, I just I couldn't trade it. It's got, I had like 72,000 shares of, of float. That's not enough for me to want to trade. Yeah, I could squeeze up real nice off of a few buy orders, but... It's hard to sustain a move with 72,000 shares of float. Um, now, where this doesn't really help is um, if there's a large float rotation. For example, um, you know, one day uh, it has like a 10x float rotation. Uh, for a float rotation, you know what? I will do a part two on that because that I don't want to overwhelm you guys. That that might that might overwhelm you guys. Um, so if you guys got anything out of this group lesson, if you think you're going to use predicted volume more, if it made sense, throw me a thumbs up or let me know you didn't get it and you need me to redo the entire thing. Really pumped for you guys. Um, I'm going to throw this on YouTube. Give it a little like button if you guys want. I'll throw in the premium archives so you can watch back how to use it. Um, again, this is for continued momentum. This is not same day momentum stuff. I mean, it, it could help if you look at the first hour of say it's got 10 million shares of volume first hour times that by four 40 million shares if it's a four million um share or, um float then you can expect the float to change 10 times meaning you can expect that the, the stock to be very liquid um but you know at the end of the day that doesn't really help me much i, I like to use it when it comes into uh, coming into contact with another resistance to either break out and and be a multi-day runner or um, have some sort of a, a bounce short or something like that. But already team, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate all the questions. Um, I'm super excited for short trader bootcamp. This is 
just the tip of the iceberg. Alrighty, team. Have a good day. Peace.